All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So look, in this one, we're going to be doing another coaching profile episode, but this time it's going to be about Jets' current defensive coordinator, Jeff Ulbrich, which was just announced the other day. So with that being said, let's get into it. So Jeff Ulbrich was handpicked by Robert Sala, right? From what I've heard, the Jets interviewed a bunch of different candidates for that defensive coordinator position. There was a lot of qualified guys, but Jeff Ulbrich made the cut. He's coming over from this Atlanta Falcons defense, right? Where he was essentially like the interim defensive coordinator. We all know Dan Quinn got fired midway through last season. Raheem Morris, the defensive coordinator, got promoted to head coach. So then all of a sudden, Ulbrich stepped in as that defensive coordinator spot, along with the linebackers coach and uh, assistant head coach as well. So understanding that the Atlanta Falcons defense in the second portion of the year was primarily Jeff Ulbrich's team, right? We, we now try to identify, was there any change of play? Was there any change of, in, in production, right? Was there even a mental shift, right? Like an attitude adjustment. And we have to start looking at these games and, and analyzing how this Falcons defense did under the, I guess, interim defensive coordinator, Ulbrich. And let me tell you, in the last month of the season, the Falcons defense, it was a complete turnaround, a complete 180. The Falcons' defense was great in the last portion of the season under Raheem Morris and Ulbrich. All right, so that's really, really encouraging. And yeah, you can push back at me and say, you know, of course they played well. Look at the roster. They have so many great players. Grady Jarrett, AJ Terrell, uh, Dante Fowler. Who else? Keanu Neal, uh, Deion Jones. Like, they have so many good players on the Falcons' defense. A lot of guys that fit that cover three system, you know, the Pete Carroll system, the, the Dan Quinn system, the Robert Sala system. So, yes, you can say, oh, well, I mean, this is a defense, a modern defense, right, built to stop the high-flying offenses that we see today. They have, they have a great roster. They have a great offense. Yeah, they should be playing this well. What really is Ulbrich doing that, that you know, is, is he the reason why all of these players are, are, are producing all of a sudden? You can push back and say that because that is a fact. The Falcons defense has a lot of great players and they have a really good system in place. But here's the fact of the matter, right? Here's the unfortunate truth for the Atlanta Falcons. Yes, they had a great roster. Yes, they had a great system in place, but they weren't producing. Under Dan Quinn, they didn't produce. I felt like it was a constant battle to find pressure off of the edge, right? And that's why you know, I've stressed before in, in re, you know in past videos uh, the the importance of finding that Nick Bosa, finding that Joey Bosa, finding that just that that overall pressure off the edge. Because if you don't have that, the system is flawed. Teams will be able to throw on you. Uh, I mean, think about it. You're bringing in Tack McKinley. He's not really working out. You're bringing in Vic Beasley. He's not really working out. Dante Fowler overpaying for him kind of up and down. So that was always Atlanta's problem to me, right? I felt like they always had solid safety play. They had solid linebacker play. Uh, corners were uh, a little questionable, but you know, they had guys I like, you know, I like AJ Terrell out of Clemson, uh, Desmond Trufant for a little, you know, he was there for a while. I liked him. I felt like the issue with this team was the pressure off the edge. So overall, they have that great system in place. They have that roster. De uh, DeMonte KZ is another guy who I really, really liked coming out of, um, I think it was San Diego state at the time. Uh, he was a senior bowl dude. I loved him. Anyway, you're looking at that defense and it just didn't produce. But under Jeff Ulbrich, it did. The last four games of the NFL season, they looked great. The last month, they looked great. They were whole, they were stopping teams. They they were really good in the red zone. They were good on third down. <sighs> fewer points, fewer yards. This Falcons defense showed out under Raheem Morris and Jeff Ulbrich. So, again, Ulbrich has that experience with the cover three, cover four, just like Robert Sala. Ulbrich actually spent some time in Seattle learning under Pete Carroll, uh, obviously then goes to UCLA and then switches over to um, Atlanta. And by the way, I completely forgot to mention at the start of the video, Ulbrich was a player. He played for the 49ers, I think from two, he played for a long time. I think it was like nine, 10 years, 2000 to 2009. So he could look at player situations and really put himself in their shoes, right? That's just like an added bonus that, that ex players have. And yeah, you can, you know, go back to college and stuff like that. Like, oh, you played in college. But when you're an NFL player, when you're a solid NFL player, you can, you really have that, that instant respect from a lot of guys in the locker room, right? Because they're, they're looking at you like, you know, you know what it takes, you know how to get the job done. Uh, from a week-to-week -week basis. You've been in practice. You've been in, in tough games. You've, you've played in tough environments. I, I, I can relate to that. And Ulbrich, from a coaching perspective, can say, hey, man, I've, I've been in your shoes. You know, I, I've, I've been hurt. 
I, I've been confused. I don't know these plays. You know, I I can re I can really relate to you and then translate it or or make it easier for players to kind of transition to whatever they're working on. So overall, I mean, he fits the system. He brings a lot of intensity. You're listening to guys like you know uh, uh, Falcons coaches speak about uh, about Albrecht. Uh, they they say nothing but great things, right? The the intensity is there. The energy is there, just like Robert Sala. And one thing I did want to make a note of: Robert Sala is actually giving Ulbrich full play calling duties full play calling duties on the defensive side of the football okay again you're, you're looking at how those Falcons players performed how they played for Ulbrich down the stretch of last season but more importantly Robert Sala can now take a step backwards and truly be that manager of a game right that managerial style of a head coach where you can focus on game management time management looking at the big picture understanding the flow of the game not really getting too uh, tied down by by the intricate play calls, by really diving into to, to the film. Uh, he can really take a step back and just look at it like almost like an outsider. But now he has that power. He has that authority to where he can step in and say, "Hey, could, you know, Mike, we need we're not getting into any third and shorts. We need to establish the run. We're we're, we're getting a little too pass happy here. Let's do that." Same thing, pull Ulbrich aside and say, hey, the quarterback hasn't had a scratch on him. He doesn't have a stain of green on him all day. We need to bring start bringing some heat. He's he's throw, picking daisies back there in the pocket. We need to get this guy on the ground. So whenever a head coach can you know, has that opportunity, especially a guy with a lot of experience who's been around the game for a long time, um, you know, it, it just provides so much of an of an extra benefit, right? Uh, it's just the cherry on top of a, of an NFL coaching staff. So all in all, Jeff Ulbrich is going to be coming in as an ex player, spending a lot of time with the Atlanta Falcons, worked at the college level. So he's so he's worked with younger guys before at UC. CLA really has a nice reputation working with with uh, with linebackers developing Deion Jones um, really performed down the stretch of last season when when his number was called he, he stepped up he produced uh, he's coming in with the same intensity the same energy from a schematics point of view the the philosophies are the same here so really I mean it's it's almost just an extension of coach Sala right I feel like everything that Sala you know has an eye for really what he wants to do is going to be extended through Ulbrich and uh, you know then trickle down to the players so I mean you gotta love the hire as we stand right now haven't played a game we'll see how everything works out but Again, a true players coach here. Uh, we're really, really doing a great job with this staff. I really, I love a lot of these different hires, man, especially the Mike LaFleur hire. I, I've been a big West Coast, uh, or, you know, big fan of the West Coast system for a long, long time now. And, uh, I, and, and when Jeremy Bates came over, I was really excited for him just to kind of see how, how everything works. You know, Darnold under center and, and just the quick passing because I'm a, I'm a fan of the quick passing. Uh, just not with the Adam Gase style where that's the only thing you can do. and That's the only thing you will do. So I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Do you like the Ulbrich hire? Are you kind of, uh, you know, uh, iffy on it? Uh, we'll see how everything plays out. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for sticking with this channel. And as always, go Jets.